Hey everybody, it's Pastor Ian Jackie one more time. Here to give God the praise he deserves with a new song. Come on, lift your hands, lift your voices, tap your feet, and dance before the Lord. He is worthy. Come on, church. Let all the people say.
It's only by your kindness. It's only by your love. It's only by your grace. I Hi, everybody. It is so good to be with you for this midweek time of sharing the Word of God. I want to talk to you about victorious living. Uh, it is a uh, something that's talked about a lot in Christian circles and in our churches, and it ought to be because the Lord in the Scripture gives us a picture and direction and instruction for living in such a way that pleases Him. And so let me define victorious living in you and me, day by day, moment by moment, conversation by conversation, uh, project by project, work by work, living and, and, and walking and speaking in such a way that pleases God. That is victorious living, living the way that pleases the Lord, living the way that's right in line with what he shares with us in the scripture. And what I'm going to share with you in the scripture today is, is just four aspects of, of victorious living, four things that if we pay attention to, I believe will put us right on the path that we need to be in living in such a way that pleases God. That's what we're talking about today. So thanks for joining me again. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to uh, live and, and once again to speak and to work in such a way that you're pleased. We realize that we're living a life that one day uh, we will give an account for. And, uh, and since that is true, Father, uh, we are so 
um, just blessed and, and, and glad about the fact that you have given us all the instruction that we need to do this well. So, Father, open the eyes of our heart, the ears of our heart, open our mind, give us the mind of Christ today that we might understand what it is to walk in wisdom, what it is to walk in blessing, and what it is to live in a way that's victorious, in a way that you would call victorious. Thank you for your word, and thank you for the opportunity to pay attention in Jesus' name. Amen. Victorious in Christ. Uh, that's the, the title of this uh, series of messages I'm going to do. This is part one, um, Healthy, Whole, and holy, healthy, whole, and holy. It says this in James 1, 4, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So the, the, the first aspect of victorious living that I, 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 that I want to talk with you about, about being healthy, whole, and holy, and have to, has to do with you and I being complete through patience. Now, patience is, is the way that God uses time and experience to complete the work he's doing in us. Let me say that again, because I think that's foundational. Patience is God's use of time and experience to complete what he's doing in us. Um, God is doing something in you. <laughs> I think you know by now, and I think I hope we all know by now that we're not some accident of, uh, of, 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 of biological processes and, and uh, there was no big bang. We didn't all of a sudden come into being and life didn't come out of nothing and nothing. The, 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 everything that we see came out of the Lord speaking. The Lord spoke and it was. And so everything that the Lord speaks has a purpose um, because his word is, is personified in Jesus Christ. And if you're in Jesus Christ, you have a purpose. And in Jesus Christ, we find our purpose and on, on the way to, to being everything God has called us to be, uh, God uses time. Uh, God uses experience um, in order to, to, to shape us and bring us to the fullness of what he intended for us all along. That is his plan. It is a good plan. And you and I are wise if we take hold of it. We take hold through patience, through waiting on the Lord, uh, uh, through walking with the Lord through the seasons, patiently, even before we see what we're after, uh, because God is doing something that will complete us over time. God uses time. Time is not just some, some abstract reality out there that came out of nothing and nowhere. Once again, time is God's is, is, is the platform, the background for God's plan for us. And he uses the, the seconds, the moments, the days, the weeks, the years uh, in, in order to develop relationship with us, in order for us to develop relationship with him, and in that time, we become everything that God says that we are. So, beloved, we, we have to keep our hearts and eyes focused on him uh, so that we don't get discouraged over time, that we don't get discouraged in the way or on the way. So when we submit ourselves to, to God's process, when we submit ourselves to relationship with him, to studying his word, to being in the house, in the closet of prayers, a lifestyle, when we submit ourselves to him as sons and daughters, then, then then we're in process and he's at work and doing that which only he can do it is a glorious work that he's determined to do in and through you now it may not look like the glorious work he's doing on your brother or your sister or that person that you see there or person you see uh on television or the person that you hear on the radio or the podcast or wherever you encounter uh, another christian that's walking in the purpose that god has for them your the, the outworking your, your purpose may not look like the outworking of their purposes. So it's best that we don't compare ourselves to one another, but understand that the same God is working in my brother in order to perfect him over time that's working in me, to perfect me over time. So hopefully I can look to my brothers and sisters and be encouraged, and they can look to me and be encouraged as they see God doing a marvelous and wonderful thing in me over time. Then they are encouraged that God is doing a wonderful and marvelous thing in them over time. You know, God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't have favorites. He does have intimates. He does have those who will submit themselves to him and to his process, which he works over time. And he promises that in the end, over that time, that you and I will come on the, come on the other side of all of these things that we go through complete, perfect, lacking nothing. That means that we understand that we have everything that we need, that we are everything that we need in Christ Jesus. He will accomplish and we will accomplish exactly what we are called for and come out once again on the other side of all these experiences over time, perfect and complete, lacking nothing, just as James said 
in James 1 4 which we noted now it says this in Hebrews uh, 13 20 to 21 now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, I often use that as the closing uh, in my closing remarks, my closing prayer, my benediction, so to speak, uh, at the end of our teaching times. Uh, when we gather as a church because it is such such a, a just a wonderful word of encouragement and such a wonderful blessing that uh, uh, that the God of peace will, will, will he has he has a, a, a once again his his will is pointed towards you he has a plan for you and he will make you complete as it says here in every good work and that means he equips you the second the second thing that I want to say is as long with the patience along with the patience goes equipment God will equip you for victorious living. In other words, he will give you everything you need, as the scripture says, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight. So the first thing I want to say about being equipped is he's equipping you so that you have exactly what you need to be and do according to his good purpose, because his good purpose is what we're after. And uh, if he equips us, um, then, then, then we we have the armor of God that we need to to uh, so we can fight the battles of the Lord, so that we're protected, so that we have uh, the word of wisdom in which to speak, that we have the path that's laid out before us in which to walk, um, and that we have everything that we need, every single tool that we need in, in order to accomplish this great thing that God is doing in us. Once again, does it be great in anybody else's sight? I'm speaking about that which is great in God's sight. You and I walking humbly. And, and, and obediently before him. That is greatness in God's sight. And he's equipped you for that. He's given you his word. Um, I want you to stop for a minute and count your blessings. I want you to stop for a minute that God has equipped you. He's put good teachers and teachings around you. He's put pastors before you who walk humbly before God so that they can serve you well. Uh, he's put men and women whose testimony, once again, that you can look to and be encouraged. And he's equipped you with the, with the giftings that you have and the health and the strength that you have. And we do well to be good stewards of what God has given us, to the equipment that God has given us. It's like buying tools to do, say, work on your car or work on your yard or work on a, a, man, a manual work or things that, 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 you, that you put your hands to. And you buy that equipment. Uh, equipment is valuable and it's expensive. And you take that equipment after you've used it and you judiciously put it back in its, 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 its right place and you put it away so that when you need that equipment again, you know where to go get it. You if you're wise, you take care of the equipment that you need or that you will need to do what you ought to do. And we're wise if we take care of the equipment that God has given us. First of all, we're wise if we take care of ourselves physically. Um, it is a very, very important thing that you and I realize that this body is the only one you're going to get. And to the degree that you and I can, that we live wisely and take care of this, this, this body, this frame, this tent, so to speak. And, and, and even though we won't always be living in this particular frame, uh, this thing will, lay, will be laid down one day. That According to the wisdom that God gives us, we take care of ourselves. Uh, because this is the equipment that the Lord has given us in order to which we will do the works that he's set before us. So take care of yourself physically, take care of yourself mentally, emotionally, take care of yourself uh, uh, through the, the word of God, through your um, adherence to the things of the scriptures, uh, to the fellowship of believers, which is so healthy. Uh, and, and, and to the closet of the prayer where we, we have a relationship with God in conversation that, that really shapes our experience with him, shapes our understanding of who he is, and shapes, uh, shapes, shapes our, our walk with him. Uh, if we do those things, then we will be healthy and, and we will take care of the equipment that God has given us to accomplish his will. He has equipped you. There's nothing God has asked you to do that he will not give you what it takes to do it. There is no vision that God gives you for which he will not give provision. And if God has called you to something, and even though you may not feel like you have the equipment at the moment for what he's called you to, just take the steps that, that's in front of you. And one step, one conversation, one work at a time, 
you'll realize that when you get to that point, God has provided the equipment. He's provided every single thing that you need at that moment. And if you read the scriptures, you see that as a theme all the way, all the way, that as men and women walk with God, that every place they arrived, there was a provision for the vision. There was the equipment for the work. And that starts with my very own vessel, this very own body that God has given me, the equipment to go out and to do and to represent Jesus Christ and represent him well. That's part of being healthy, whole, and holy. So patience, you're patient and equipment. You are equipped in the Lord. Let's go on to Colossians uh, chapter two, verses eight through 10. Paul says to us there, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. And there's that word complete again. And complete in the scripture, uh, as, as it is given to us as a completion, rather, as it is given to us as, as a spiritual concept, just has to do with us, once again, being whole and healthy and holy because of the relationship we have with our Creator and our Savior. Uh, and that's what Paul is speaking here. He says, let, nobody, no, let no one deceive you with uh, their own take on religious things or spiritual things. He calls it philosophy and empty deceit. And, and just people uh, just coming up with things that uh, wherever they get those things from, that's really their business and it's not mine, but people will come up with all kinds of things about God which aren't so, that, it, but that they, they may sound so, they may sound as if they are wise, but uh, they may sound as if they are insightful. But when you test them against the scriptures, you find that they're empty and they're based in deceit. They, they may not be trying to deceive you, they have just deceived themselves because they have uh, understood things with some other standard other than the man Jesus Christ. And he calls it, once again, the according to the traditions of men, the basic principles of the world. In other words, based in the earthly, worldly thinking um, that, that falls short of the wisdom that God would give us if we, if we walk by faith. And he says, not, and all these things, not according to Christ, for in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily and Jesus Christ is everything you're going to ever need to know about God. And you will never know anything about the Father except for by the Son. And you will never receive the Spirit except for by the Son. And so we, Jesus takes a preeminent place in, in the shaping of who we are that we might be healthy, whole, and holy. And we, so the, the point that I'm making here is a focus. The focus is on the man Jesus Christ. So if we're walking with Jesus and we're, we're healthy, whole, and holy, and we're walking victoriously. We're back. We're patient, as we said before. We, we realize we're equipped. God equips us for everything. And we're focused. We're focused on Jesus Christ. And there is no other, uh, no, no, no other eye candy out there, so to speak, uh, whether it be spiritually derived or, or derived out of the world or, or, or derived out of our own hearts. There's nothing, nothing that, that takes our focus away from the man Jesus Christ. And every healthy, holy, whole Christian, every victorious Christian that I know has a keen, mean focus on the man Jesus Christ. And at the end of the day, that's really all that they have to talk about. Now we can talk about all that's going on around us and sometimes that's appropriate, but we can also get lost in all that's going on around us and that's inappropriate for somebody that's gonna be healthy in Christ. We have to be focused on Jesus and I believe that we have to work hard to steal our focus back from the world to put it on Jesus Christ if we're going to be victorious, if we're going to be healthy, if we're going to be whole, if we're going to be holy. Being focused on Jesus. Uh, you can't be too focused on Jesus. Jesus is the only person, the only thing in the universe in which you and I can be obsessed and it'd be a healthy thing. If I'm obsessed with anything else or anyone else, it's an unhealthy thing. But if I'm obsessed, and I just want to use that word in its, in, in its most objective sense, if I am obsessed, if I am in totally, totally engulfed or, and, and embracing one particular thing or one particular concept or person, that thing, concept or person must be Jesus Christ. 
He must be the focus. And then he will minister health to me so that my, my eyesight and my vision and my hearing might be rightly aligned that I would see and hear and walk as he would have me to do. But that only comes through my focus on him. We can truly cast all of our cares on him because he cares for us. And we can be focused on him. And that out of that focus will become, once again, a, a right viewpoint on everything else around us. If you focus on Jesus, every single other thing that you could focus on will take its proper place uh, just, just, just in the backdrop uh, of Jesus Christ because everything must, put, must be put behind Jesus. Nothing is to rival Jesus in our focus or our attention or our conversation. Jesus has to be the center that everything finds its proper place. We find ourselves having proper conversations. We find ourselves doing the proper works. We find ourselves uh, thinking well of ourselves and of others. And that is all because of our focus on the man Jesus Christ and our refusal to get confused, to get waylaid and sidetracked with any other philosophy. So the final point I want to speak about as it pertains to this whole healthy, holy life, this victorious living we're called to is confidence. So let's go by review. First of all, patience, equipment, being equipped by God, being focused on Jesus Christ and no one else. And then confidence. I want to finish with this. Um, it says this in Philippians um, 1, verses 3 through 6. Paul says these words, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Because I think this that passage kind of congeals and pulls together everything that we've been talking about today. Uh, and and we'll, once again, we'll finish with confidence. I believe that you and I are called to a, a, a point of believing, uh, of holding on to the things of God, such, such to the point that we walk around uh, just with an air of certainty. Uh, not, not arrogant in any way and, and not self-focused or not I can do this or not having anything to do necessarily with my own esteem or my own abilities or even my own giftedness, but in God, in the Lord himself, once again, back to the focus. Uh, and, and we focused on Jesus Christ. And so therefore there's a confidence that no matter what else is going on around us, we see Jesus. And I defy any of you to be less than confident when you're looking at Jesus. Now, when we look around at the, the, the waves and, and the effects of the winds and the storms, that may be one thing. Uh, perhaps uh, this is a, an encouragement to somebody, someone that's listening to me to turn away from looking at those things and turn back to looking at Jesus and watch your confidence immediately, immediately be restored. Because when we're looking at Jesus and we understand that he is the Alpha and the Omega of our faith, he's the author and finisher of, of who I am in the Lord, then uh, when I do look at him, I see the love and the strength and the power that is available to me in him if I will simply, simply look to him. My confidence returns. And, and we're confident in this very thing, Paul says, that he who has begun a good work in you, who's begun a good work in you, your Alpha, will complete that work, your Omega. And he started it, he will see it through, he will finish it. And I, and I believe you and I, as we focus on Jesus, begin to see ourselves as a finished product in, so to speak. Not that we have arrived and not that there are not things to go through and battles to be fought and, and things to, just battles to be won and, uh, and joy to be experienced and, and even difficulties and sufferings to be experienced, all those things are before us. But once again, when our eyes are on Jesus who's finished his work, we realize that our work is finished in him. And since our work is finished in him, we have great confidence great confidence that whatever we're going through, we're going to go through well. Might I encourage you today, beloveds, that, that the sufferings and the, the things that we suffer and things that we allow, the things that God allows in our lives are there for a glorious purpose. And that uh, will then change everything about how we view those things and how we walk in those things and the smile that we keep on our face and the laughter we keep in our voice and the joy we walk in, the bounce we keep in our step because we're confident in Jesus Christ. Our eyes are on him. We're focused on him. Uh, we're equipped by him. Uh, we are patient. Uh, we wait patiently and we work while we wait in him and we walk with a confidence, an air of certainty that belongs to those who love Jesus Christ and those alone. So, beloved, keep your eyes on him. Have confidence in him. Wait on him. Know that you have 
every single thing that you need that's necessary for life, godliness, victory, for health, holiness, and wholeness. You are complete in Christ Jesus. You are complete in Him. Uh, married couples, you are complete in Christ Jesus. Uh, both of you are to bring two complete people to the relationship. And one plus one equals one. God unifies us together and we walk as one because we are all being completed in Christ Jesus. And as we focus on Him, His work we see as a finished work. Even though it is not yet finished, we see it as such because we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, continue the work God has begun in you. Continue. It is not what you begin, it's what you stick with. This friend of mine told me that years ago. It's not what I started. It's what I stuck with. Beloveds, be diligent to stick with the things that God has set before you, the relationships, the works, the ministry, uh, the small things as well as the great things. And you'll realize that God has, has given you patience. He's developing that in you. He'll equip you. He will help you stay focused and he will buoy your spirit so that you are confident and you exude that confidence wherever you go. So blessings on you, beloveds. Thank you for hearing me today. Thank you for considering the things that I've shared. Uh, open up the scriptures and read through the scriptures and make sure that everything I said to you is the word of God. Not simply based on the word of God, but it is the word of God. Not simply derived from the word of God, but it is the word of God. For only the word of God is the equipment that you need to be all that you're called to be. And, I, and I'm determined to be faithful to God in his word. I love you. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you Sunday morning. Uh, you can catch us uh, live streaming uh, um, on this house Facebook page and also on YouTube. Uh, the, the, the sermons and teachings are always there for you during the course of the week. You can always go back and watch them at a convenient time. Uh, and I hope you've made the Father's House teaching and fellowship a consistent part of your spiritual diet. Make sure, beloveds, that you eat well, that you, you drink and you eat according to the Word of God and that you live as such. And keep fellowship and keep serving. Blessings on your church, blessings on your local church. If you if you have another, lo another local church other than the Father's house, blessing on, on the man of God, the woman of God in that place, and blessing on the people of God in that place. Keep lifting your hands and your hearts to heaven. Keep enjoying the Lord. Keep walking in confidence. Keep being focused. Keep being uh, uh, working with the equipment that God's given you and walking in patience. The woman that waits on the Lord, the man that waits on the Lord, who knows his strength. God bless you. I love you. See you soon. In your The things that you do be close to you. I wanna walk in your righteousness. Be the one that you favor, the one that you bless.